Nos oedd da a croeso unwaith eto i noson gymdeithasol ffoton. Um, ni yma uh, i ddarlledu yn fyw i uh, Gymru. Um, good evening, welcome to uh, Photon Social. Um, and as you can see there, our website www.photon.wales, well worth a visit if you like to hear podcasts about photography. And uh, those of you uh, living and working in Wales, maybe perhaps you'd like to fill in this photography survey, Wales 2020. Uh, it would be very nice if you could. Curators, photographers, anybody interested in photography, uh, go to the site and uh, fill in the survey. And tonight, um, I'm really pleased to welcome uh, one of my favourite photographers uh, uh, from Wales, uh, Rhodri Jones. Hello. Hello, <laughs> Rodri. <laughs> it's very weird, this right. stuff, this web stuff. Yeah, no. no, 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 it takes a little bit of getting used to. But yeah, hello from Italy, from Bologna, from near Bologna. All right. How long have you been? Uh, well, I, I suppose I should. The first question I should ask you, uh, really, Rodri, is how's lockdown been for you? Um, actually, for me personally, it hasn't been too bad because I am lucky enough to live just outside of the city. So I live in a farmhouse that I um, renovated a few years ago and there's lots more work to do. So uh, I've been kept busy. Um, the frustrating bit for me, as for everybody, is I can't move around, you know, so uh, yeah. It's a bit of a frustration, but yeah, we just got to grin and bear it. And uh, it seems like Italy now is over the worst of this first phase, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we're hoping to be able to move a little bit more before too long. Right. How, how's the Italian blood mixing with the uh, Welsh blood, uh, Rodri? In, in what way do you oh. mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, At this point, I'll say cheers to everybody. I'm drinking some uh, blood. <laughs> no, I, I suppose the, the Welsh psyche and the Italian psyche, I mean, you've been living in, in Italy for a long time now. Um, yeah, I have. I mean, I first moved to Italy uh, a very long time ago in 1982. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I've spoke spent most of my adult life in uh, based in Italy at least um, been lucky enough to travel to many places from Italy but um, it generally has been traveling from Italy rather than from back home in Wales do you miss Wales uh, I do I do I, I've got a love-hate relationship with the place I love going back and um, then I love going away again um you know it, it's strange i mean now i do consider my home to be italy more than wales but yeah obviously i i, I love coming back and um you know I, I come back quite regularly at least twice a year and um sometimes i spend more time uh there i mean when was it about 15 years ago i did a book on wales called mm -hmm. written and all Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, I spent quite a bit more time in Wales. Yeah. Uh, but I still have family and, obviously, friends and things. So, yeah, I love coming back to Wales. Uh, well, we're here uh, to talk about your pictures, really. It's all about the pictures. And um, you've been working on one project for a considerable length of time. That's right. Yeah, festa. Um, festa means kind of a feast or party. And uh, it's work I actually started in 1989, believe it or not, in, in Italy. Um, and I have been working on it more or less consistently since. Um, after the 2016 Brexit thing, I uh, decided, okay, well, I better ask for Italian nationality as well. And so I decided, right then, I want to celebrate the fact that um, I'm becoming Italian. So I dug up in the archive a lot of old shots and uh, started taking new ones. Mm -hmm. So I've, um, I'm planning on publishing a book next year called Festa. Um, and um, 
I mean, the book has like, I don't know what it is, but it's something like 160 images plus. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've selected 15. Um, and just to give a, a slight idea, and this first image that you can see on there, yeah. that's um, an image taken in uh, Sant'Arcangelo, which is in Romagna, which is the next region down from me. Um, and basically, uh, I worked there uh, as a light technician many, many years ago. And um, so I revisited Sant'Arcangelo for, uh, for this uh, FESTA project uh, in 2017. And in some ways, this whole project is like going back to the past for me. Um, so it's like um, going back to where I started off in many ways, which is more or less, I guess, uh, you know, street photography. So yeah. that particular image is an image where, you know, street photography comes out because it's, it's all about being aware of your uh, surroundings, being mm. there, being in tune with your surroundings, but also being able to anticipate mm. a potential situation so mm. that if it does happen, you're ready to click. Yeah. Um, I, um, I've, Obviously, we're getting um, people asking questions uh, here, and I'll sort of uh, throw one at you now. It's um, okay. Uh, I've seen your photographs at the National Library. I've seen your photographs at the National Museum, uh, but I've not seen them at Photo Gallery. Is it uh, something that you said? <laughs> <laughs> Ask Photo Gallery. I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, actually. Before Photo Gallery uh, became, um, it was in the Turner House, and um, I did have a show in the Turner House back in, I think it was 2002 or 2003 or something. Right. Um, and then um, Photo Gallery took over Turner House down in Penarth. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I, I have actually shown in the space, but um, not under the title of Photo Gallery. Yeah, do you think um, it's interesting you were t uh, talking about you're going to be making a book out of uh, this particular project. Uh, is that a difficult issue or is it an easier issue when you, uh, that you're living in Italy? Are, are, are publishers more prepared to uh, publish photographic books in Italy than they are here in Wales? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, most of my books have been published in Italy, but that's because it's just been um, a question of circumstance. And the Welsh work was published by a, a Welsh publisher. I really wanted a Welsh publisher to be involved. Mm -hmm. And it was Seren, um, <laughs> very good publishers in Wales, yeah. uh, down in Bringend. Um But other than that, uh, the other five books, is it, that have been published in Italy. But that's basically because I'm yeah, because you know, you're based, I'm there, based yeah. here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, another question has popped up here. Um, how was the process of editing the project down into a book? I mean, I know we gave you a dreadfully difficult task of editing down to 15 pictures, but how is the editing going uh, or gone for the uh, production of the book? And how it's, a, it's, it's a kind of ongoing process. You more or less have an idea which grows as you're doing the project itself. I mean, as you're working on it, you're constantly thinking, well, how in the hell am I going to present all this work, you know, mm -hmm. and over 30 years work and everything. Mm -hmm. So you start jotting down ideas and everything. I mean, editing is something that I like to try and do with other people as well, because right. okay. when, when you're working with just your own work, it becomes quite difficult to be objective. And, uh, you know, you've got the memories, the personal memories of every situation, but um, it's a long process. And, you need to take time as well. You know, you can't just throw a bunch of photos together. You have to have some kind of feel and you have to have some kind of direction um, yeah. do, do you for it print, to work at all. Do you print them out at all um, or do you do it all on computer? Um, I used to always print out, okay, um, because there were literally thousands of images this time yeah at least the, the 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 first edits I've been doing mainly on computer I mean just basically because of money you know <laughs> um, but I always the final edits when you start getting a bunch of photos together 
I much prefer using hard copies. Yeah. Because that way you actually see what the feel is of actually turning a page. Yes. Because there has to be a flow within the book, you know, which yeah. um, which is essential, I believe, anyway. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Brian is running things in the background here. Um, uh, Brian, can you stick up the, the next slide, please, Brian? Where are we? Where are we? Are yeah, we I'm lost too. Oh. Have we lost Brian? That's the big question. Um, His lips. It would be a shame if we lost Brian, but I think we can keep on talking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, here he is. Here he is. Oh, okay. Uh, explain this one to us, uh, Rodri. Okay, this is basically uh, in a place called Otana, which is in central Sardinia, uh, the island, just off, one of the main islands just off uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. And this is a very, very ancient um, festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, what I've done is I've taken shots of festivals all around Italy just mm -hmm. to show the incredible variety there is uh, in this country, which is, you know, one of its greatest riches. Um, and this particular festival is very ancient, um, way pre-Christian. And this is a boes. And a boes is a kind of an animal, mythical figure. Mm -hmm. And they're brought out for the first time on the 17th of January, which is uh, Sant'Antonio. Uh, it's a, a festival which has always been to do with fire. And it's one of the first kind of end of winter festivals, I guess. Um, and then these mythical figures come around and dance around the, fig, uh, the fire. And then they also come out again later uh, during Carnival. Um, but this one is much more, this particular feast is much more felt by the local population. So you don't have so many tourists and things around. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's this phone show. All right. Well, there's uh, another question that's popped up here. Do you still travel around in a camper van? Uh, I still have Miranda. The camper van has a name. Uh, she's called Miranda, yeah, and um, she became um, Majoren. I mean, she uh, she's eighteen years old now and has uh, three hundred eighty thousand kilometers on the clock. So, um, yeah, yeah the, I mean, a lot of this work has been taken thanks to Miranda because uh, yeah. I drive around to these festivals and find a place to park and then spend quite a few days before and after the festival quite yeah. often. Do you talk to people who run these festivals at all, Rodri? Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, it's it's really important to have an insight in, in what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. So you can read up so much, but it's a good idea often to go to places beforehand yeah, yeah. and um, chat with people because it also means that you're going to get the better shots that way because you know what's going to go on. Yeah. Um, this is um, this next shot is in uh, near Alessandra, Rocco Grimaldi, and uh, this figure is called Nenein. The little, it's like a little baby figure, oh. and this is for a carnival. Again, a very very old uh, um, feast, yeah. and um, so this was actually before they appear in public because they're going around on a trailer being pulled by a tractor and uh, from house to house collecting the various people who are going to be involved so yeah. in order to know about that kind of situation you have to be there beforehand and know what's going on right and was this one of your earliest shots of festivals and uh, uh well this is 2001 i mean i i don't know why but i just it, not none of the shots that i um Selected for you guys was uh, from the 90s, but I have a lot of work from the 90s as well. Yeah, um, yeah this is still taken on analogical uh, yes. film. So it's a strange thing, this, because it's over a 30-year period. I've been using all types of different cameras and uh, mm -hmm. obviously analogical and digital as well. Um, <clears throat> it's... Um, uh... When you produce your book, will you be adding words to it at all, or will they just be captions about the places and the festivals? 
No, there, there will be introductions by um, uh, anthropologists, perhaps historians. There, there'll be actually, um, a, a writer, an okay. Italian writer, who will write a short piece as well. Because okay. the whole thing about it is that it's not just about the traditional feasts, it's about feasts and uh, parties in general. Uh, yes. And it's a very personal take. Yeah. So in order to help guide people through the book, there will be texts as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, uh, that's just come up, 2009? Okay, th th this one is uh, in the very north of Italy. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Wildmann in a place called Tramin, which is in uh, um, what is known as uh, Alto Adige in Italian, or. Um, Südtirol in German because it's a German speaking area mm -hmm. and again this is a very old old festival and they have these kind of crocodile figures right. which these guys carry around and um, their, their jaws open and close and uh, this was taken towards the end of the day and they are absolutely out of it as you probably can see from that kid's face you know I mean they, they really are out of it well, are, are these festivals born out of um, uh, out of? Um, do they have religious undertones at all, uh, uh, Well, it's kind of pre-Christianity. A lot of them. I mean, what happened was a lot of the Christian, um, well, the Christian establishment took over some of these festivals. Mm -hmm. Again, this is right at the beginning of the year, um, this one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Christians then introduced, uh, well, Christmas, uh, <laughs> for example. And yeah. so it was a way of kind of not alienating people yeah. from their own traditional festivals, but just trying to slowly introduce them with new festivals to kind of um, convince them to become Christians and things. But what is really interesting in, in Italy is that you still have a very kind of ancient regional feel to the place. Each region has its own thing. And so some of the really old festivals still exist. Yeah. Are they, um, do they still have life, these festivals? I mean, or do you see them uh, sort of waning with the passage of time and... Uh, or is that not the case? Well, it's, you know, it's strange. I mean, this one, for example, this is La Maitonata. It's in southern Italy, mm -hmm. uh, the south of Molise. And, you know, this particular festival is great fun. I mean, what it is, can I, can I explain a little bit about yes, what it's yeah, about? Do. Okay. Do. It, it's basically, it's on the 31st of December, which is actually my birthday. And you have these groups of musicians who go around house to house and they play pretty strange instruments uh, often. Mm -hmm. And basically they kind of rap about the story of each family or each household. And um, they sing these songs or raps outside the house mm -hmm. and then are invited in. But I mean, they tell just about everything that can be told, you know, like, um, yeah, and your wife's been having an, uh, an affair with the uh, butcher, <laughs> and you've been um, seeing the post, uh, the lady in the post office and all that. But the fam, it's been going on for so long yeah. that um, families, the way it works is they sing these songs, and then the families have to have to kind of um, invite them into the home and wine and dine them. So it would be a really terrible thing to do to say, sorry, we're not letting you in. You've embarrassed me too much. So it's been going on for centuries. And quite often what used to happen and still happens is that these groups of musicians, they go to the wealthier families and because they're going to get wined and dined better. And so it's a, it's a really democratic kind of transparent thing within the community. I mean, it sounds pretty iffy in many ways, but it, I find it just beautiful, you know, um, that people can have the nerve and the audacity to tell the truth, you know. And nobody takes umbrage? Uh, I'm sure they do, but they can't show it.
<laughs> so yeah, that's. Uh, that's and I mean, we were talking about whether these festivals are dying out. I mean, this yeah. this particular festival used to happen all around this particular area, uh -huh. and in some of the villages, it no longer happens simply because so much of the youth is moved to the north because there isn't a lot of work in these areas. Uh -huh. So for some places, yeah, you know, it is. It's kind of um, dying out, but these things are so, it's almost, they're almost within the DNA of people that yeah. they just carry on, you know, as long as there's going to be young people around, they will carry on because it's part of their identity. Yeah. And you're talking about small communities. So I guess people in small com communities know everything that's going on anyway, if it's anything. Yeah, I exactly. It's just bringing it out into the open, you know, so... Um, yeah, this this is a pretty wacky looking one, uh, Rodri. What's happening here? Well, this is a place called uh, Guardia San Framondi, which is um, near Benevento, again in southern Italy, mm -hmm. central south Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, this um, this only happens once every seven years. Um, basically, you see these guys in their hoods and everything. Mm -hmm. It's um, they are celebrating penitence. So the, the, that little round thing in the right of the picture, uh -huh. it's a cork with nails in it. Uh -huh. And the guys go around hitting their chests and it's like in penitence. Um, and it's, it's a, a very old medieval Catholic tradition. Right. And then the Catholic Church kind of said, well, well hold on, this is a bit too much. Um, from the 17th century on and try to get rid of it mm -hmm. but again because it becomes such a, a part of people's identity they refused the local populace just refused to stop doing it mm -hmm. uh, and they came to a kind of um, a, a compromise during the fascist era so uh, they said okay we'll do it once every seven years and so it only happens once every seven years this was 2017 so the next one will be in 2024 and why the hoods uh, um a lot of religious festivals will have these hoods i mm -hmm. mean i don't know you know how the hoods arrived in the us but it might well have been you know kind of catholic uh fraternities yeah because it's often to do with fraternities so that the individual is not important no. They're there to show their own penitence, um, yeah. but they don't need to be identified. It's a very personal thing for them. Yeah. And specifically, um, male, specifically male as well, obviously, isn't it? Uh, there are women who do it as well now, but I oh. think that's a, a more recent thing. They also have um, another procession where they um, hit each other, well, hit themselves with chains, mm -hmm. um, and the women take part in that as well. Okay, cool. Um, let's move on, Brian. Let's uh, see another slide. And uh, here we have a, um, a collection uh, a, of women here. Well, tell us about this one, uh, Roger. This is, uh, seems fascinating to me. Absolutely. Uh, well, th this is basically down in Puglia. Yes. Uh, Canosa di Puglia. And this is a procession which happens uh, on e during Easter. Mm -hmm. And all these ladies, they're dressed in black and have a black veil over their faces and they are singing and it's a kind of a chant and it's absolutely, you know, shivers run down your spine to hear this chant because there are yeah. hundreds of them. Right. They're walking through the streets of the town and they are chanting and a very old chant which is supposed to represent the the pain that Mary felt Right. Uh, having seen her son Jesus being put up on the cross, basically. Yeah. Um, is uh, do people come from other regions to take part in these festivals at all? Um, yeah, I, they do. I mean, you'll have a kind of a you'll have a main group, which mm -hmm. um, you know are local people, and generally from the villages around. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, they have become tourist attractions, you know, and it is a kind of a weird phenomena because you don't know 
really how much these festivals are, are, are felt anymore yeah. uh, for their original kind of uh, thing and how much they are something which just attracts a lot of tourism and a lot of people and they're quite important to the local economy yeah yeah okay mm. let's move on uh, brian next slide please ah here we go um i love this shot as well it's just uh um the way the guy is peeking around the corner there it's, uh, <laughs> it's lovely uh, tell me about this one okay so I've been photographing a lot of different festivals around Italy in different regions and everything. But there are also new festivals which have kind of developed since I've been here. Mm -hmm. And this is a festival celebrating the end of Ramadan, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously a Muslim festival, an Islam uh, festival. And um, in areas where you have quite large uh, communities, Mm -hmm. of Muslims they've opened up their own festivals they want people to join in mm -hmm. because it's a way of kind of um, bonding with um, yeah. their neighbors mm -hmm. and um, so this was yeah at the end of Ramadan they have a big feast mm -hmm. um, and this was in Bologna the city near where I live mm -hmm. um, and again this was just you know just happened there were a lot of they illuminated the whole street because the festival was happening right through this quite long street mm -hmm. and there were all kinds of food stalls and that kind of stuff happening and they, they illuminated it with just kind of um lights uh, on the side of the street so mm -hmm. i found that light kind of interesting so packed myself um and uh, just waited for something to happen and then this couple came around mm. and literally you know i took the photo when they noticed me so it's that kind of magical moment you know which can yeah. i i love photography also because of this you know because sometimes you 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 just don't realize what is happening as you taking that photo you know and it's yeah. about being in in uh, you really feeling the moment you're yeah. kind of almost there for the moment and you don't exist and that's the bit that i really love you know it's like yeah. you're part of a bigger thing and you're just ready and part of that thing so you're just an instrument of that thing yeah. So, uh, how important is it? You, uh, how long did you stay in one position before this happened, uh, Rodri? Just out of uh, I, 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 I can't remember this particular one, but um, it's weird. You know, sometimes if you're in tune mm. with, with with your surroundings, it, it doesn't necessarily take a long time. If mm. you're kind of losing it, you move, and then something just goes click, you know, and you've missed it. Yes. So, indeed, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it is a weird one. And because you're in, I, I become in a kind of, I almost get into a, I don't know, how can you say, like a, a, a condition in which I'm not that aware of myself or of time. Yes. Because I'm just going with the flow, you know. Ah, no then. This one's uh, in the rain as well, uh. Probably. Yeah, well, I had to include some different types of uh, uh, kind of weather conditions as well. No, th this was um, Chinese New Year in Milan. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I wanted to show how Italy is changing and uh, the new people who have come and chosen to be Italians mm -hmm. and live in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously include myself in some ways. And, um, yeah, this was just another of those little situations. They put kind of cordons along the street because this is a massive event. Mm -hmm. And um, I was kind of ducking under the, co uh, the cordon to uh, take photos of the processions. And this little kid, we got into a kind of a game. Right. So uh, we were kind of ducking under the cordon every once in a while and then in the end I thought yeah Jesus this is the photo and took a photo of her Wonderful. and just the sheer joy you know um, yeah. I, I you know I've done a lot of kind of pretty heavy work in the past you know of um, 
conflicts, etc. Uh, mm. So this one's a real pleasure to do, um, to actually show the other side of humanity. Yeah. And people having fun, and um, because that's very important too, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Next one, Brian, please. Ah. Uh, yeah. I, I guess you, uh, you use a bit of flash as well, don't you? Uh, I do. I do. Yeah. The, um, quite a few of the of the photos we've seen have uh, I've used flash. Mm -hmm. uh, this was with um, a long exposure, obviously. So the flash <laughs> was just to freeze the situation. Yeah. And this is um, and another area of uh, Italy again. Mm -hmm. And this is a kind of a 1950s, 60s rockabilly type festival, yeah. which has been going for about 30 years. Right. And um, people come from all over Europe, you know, to listen to kind of rock music and um, dance their hats out for uh, a whole weekend, three, four days this thing lasts. Okay. So it was good fun. Yeah, I bet it was. Uh, right, and uh, uh, you do, this one is uh, Sampdoria, so football. And football is a big, big thing in Italy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, could, I couldn't do something on, you know, uh, feasts and uh, celebrations uh, in Italy without involving football. Yeah. So this is actually Spal, it's a Ferrara football team, and they, these guys were all celebrating because they hadn't been relegated into the second division, I think it was last year, or oh, no, the year before. And um, so this was a big game that they had, and they actually won it at home. So everybody was celebrating the fact that they hadn't been sent back down to Division 2. Right. Well, I mean, um, talking about sort of uh, football, there's a Welsh connection, obviously, uh, with Italy. Um, and there's a question that's popped up here. Uh, when you're back in Wales, do you pick up on the Italian diaspora and make, uh, and make photographs? Uh, have you done that at all? I mean, there's a huge sort of Italian community, especially in South Wales. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have done that and um, followed because a lot of the people in South Wales they're actually from one area. Yes, they which are is yeah. near Parma. Yeah, which is an area where I've uh, photographed, obviously. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, I I did do something on Italian. Diaspora, when I did the Return and All book, I don't yeah. know if it, it actually was used in the book. I can't remember. But, yeah, I have photographed Italians in uh, right. in Wales. Yeah. Okay, next photograph, please, oh. Brian. <clears throat> oh, this is uh, – uh, these moments are, are special, aren't they, um, uh, when you have this intimacy going on? Yeah. Um, you know, photography is a strange thing because sometimes you're taking very, very private moments, but yeah. there are moments which hopefully we all get to feel once in a while, you know? And yeah. um, so I don't feel it's really an intrusion. You're just, again, you're going with the flow of what's happening around you. Yeah. And this is a very beautiful moment for me. And so I don't have, you know, a big problem with uh, documenting it. This was um, a massive celebration for the Jubilee, the 2,000 years, you know, the official 2,000 years in Rome. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were huge celebrations in the city. Yeah. But I think this is, you know, this very small intimate moment is one of my favorite shots from that. Um, I was down there for a few days, obviously, and it was uh, a reportage I was doing for a paper. Yeah. La Repubblica, and um, yeah, I kind of, um, it's one of my favorite shots, to be honest, in Italy, because I, I, I came to Italy because of love, you know, and um, right. and it is a country full of love. Um, it's a country full of emotions of all types, um, and yeah, so I recognize, um, you know, one of the reasons of being here. Uh, for an intimate moment like this, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, lovely. On the next one, please, Brian. Yeah, this here we is go. again love, you know, yeah. and this is Rome 20 years later. 
Um, and a lot has happened. I mean, you wouldn't have seen this on the streets 20 years ago. No, certainly not. Uh, especially not in Rome. This is a gay pride festival. Mm -hmm. And it, again, it was a massive event. Uh, actually, it was almost as big as that one 20 years ago. Uh, and fantastic. Just such a joyous um, feast, you know. It really was. And they have gay pride all around Italy. And they kind of have different periods and everything. Yes. But, yeah, it, you know, Italy has moved on it's incredible how some of the catholic countries really have developed in the last 20 years i mean ireland is another one mm. um i've been lucky enough to photograph there as well and you know the changes that have been happening in italy and in ireland and uh, in other catholic countries are just amazing if you think about the conditioning that they've had for so long you know for so many centuries yeah. And yeah, so this is modern Italy and I love it. Yeah, cool. And onwards. And um, I love this photograph because it's uh, Romeo and Juliet, isn't it, really? Well, again, it's one of those intimate moments, you know. Yeah. And um, if you're in the flow, the people that you're actually taking the photographs of, they are so much into their own thing. And if you're in the flow, you won't be disturbing them. No. You can actually be quite close. I mean, I shoot mainly with wide angle, which means that I'm really quite close. Yeah. But if you're moving in such a way and they are obviously feeling what they're feeling in such a way, yeah. you know, you're not going to be disturbing them. You're yeah. not actually um, intruding. You know, you're simply there to document what is a, a fantastic, beautiful moment. And uh, this was an 18th birthday party. Um, so they were young kids, you know, and they were, again, gorgeous. Yeah, can I ask you why the focus on the, on the hand and the, and, the, and the bangles rather than on the, on the kiss? Well, I always work with, uh, with manual, the cameras yeah. in manual. Um, I do now, this was taken a while ago, so this is kind of over 10 years ago. I think oh. I was still focusing manual. Mm -hmm. um, but I, now I use uh, autofocus because unfortunately my eyesight isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. But um, here I think, I, I don't know what happened. I, you know, I'm moving all the time. I'm moving very, uh, with slow movements, but um, I just, Found, uh, what I found intriguing was that little tattoo that the girl's got on her yes. hand. And I just didn't know, you know, what it was all about. But that was the moment that really, the, that was the thing that touched me. And the moment was happening behind it. So, yeah. you know, you don't have time to think about things. Again, if you're going with the flow, yes, stuff is there for you. And you just have to be kind of... Um, ready to take what's happening in f and, and you're not aware you're not you're not thinking you're just yeah, yeah. you're just yeah. there i uh, yeah i understand yeah. completely how you feel uh, i think this is probably the last shot and the uh, the only color one in this uh, sequence yeah we well i mean in the book there will be a few come color shots and <laughs> i don't know whether this will make it into the book but it was um this easter easter sunday i like everybody else have I'm not working with press anymore, so um, I wasn't kind of going around hospitals and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, this was in taken last Easter Sunday, um, and it's really close to my home. Um, I sneaked out just for that one day, mm. see what I could get. And this basically is in the local dialect. Italy has loads of local dialects, yeah. and it, it, this says "tien uh, bata." And Tim Bart, that means just keep strong, basically. Uh, you know, everybody's been in lockdown since the beginning of March mm -hmm. in Italy, and this was taken at the end of March. So, yeah. Um, and probably a, a very nice place for us to end our conversation, um, uh, Rodri. It's been an absolute delight going through your work. I've enjoyed um looking at them and enjoy talking to you about them. I think they're superb and I'm really looking forward to seeing the book. Do you have a, a publication 
uh, sort of deadline or um, is that not really uh, I mean you know the, the, the situation now is it's kind of very fluid we just yeah. don't know what will be happening you know yeah um, so we'll have to see how it goes okay cool thank you very much Croeso, adiochi, pawb, pawb, pawb.